You guys are beautiful. Thank you all for being here, man. I got a um, a word that God laid on my heart. I want to give to you, and um, I want you to pray for me because this word that I'm getting ready to preach to you is probably it's not a um, it's not a topic that gets talked about a lot. Matter of fact, a lot of preachers veer from it. And uh, they don't talk about this subject a lot because, number one, I believe they don't know. I, don't, I believe they really don't know this, this topic I'm getting ready to talk to you about. They don't understand it. I'm going to talk to you about prosperity. I'm going to talk to you about God's prosperity. I'm not, I don't abuse this topic because, let me set a foundation for you real quick. I don't abuse this topic but I do believe in prosperity. Uh, God's not broke. He's not broke. Now, I want you to hear this sermon because this right here is going to probably get a lot of emails. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of people sitting there and going, well, I, I just don't know about what the preacher said. Well, let me read it from the Bible, from the Word of God, and may you give God your ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying and then, really, you still don't have a, you really don't have a fight in this, in this because the word's already been established, whether you like it or not. So um, I'm just going to read what God wrote in the Bible, and then you can make your own little decision. And if you want to live the way you're living, and if it's working for you, hasta la vista, baby. But I'm telling you today that we got a God that delights in his children's prosperity. So I, I'm going to preach this word, and I know it's going to make some of you squimmer. It's all right. Just keep that seat warm, hallelujah. But uh, I really believe that God spoke to me and spoke a powerful word into my, in my spirit. So this whole month, I'm going to be preaching on the topic. The title of this sermon is God's Delight. There are certain things that makes God smile. How many of y'all are interested if it makes God happy? If God delights in it, how many of y'all want to be a part of that? Well, you're at the right church today. Hallelujah. So I'm going to preach the word to you. And if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Psalms chapter 35. Psalm 35. I really believe what God spoke into my heart. He said that he wants to expose the lies and reverse the curse. I believe God wants to expose the lies that you have been told. That I have been told ever since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. Whatever that means, that's what my granny said. But ever since I've been little, I have been lied to. And so now I have become a man, a student of the Bible, and I am reading the Bible for myself and giving God my ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And guess what I have found out? The reason why a lot of people is in the place they are is because they have leave, believed the lie of the enemy. So today, I'm going to, through the Word of God and through the preaching of God's Word, we're going to expose a lie today, and I really believe God is going to reverse the curse. He's going to reverse the curse. So how many of you are ready for a word that's going to bless your life? Bless you! I'm not going to, talk, I'm not going to sit up here and say, shame on you! I'm going to tell you what the Lord said. So I'm ready for a word that God has sent to us, to me. So turn to your neighbor and say, uh, I want you to catch this word today. Catch this word. Watch this, Del Corn. Don't you fumble. Look at him again and say, don't you fumble today. That's right. Some of you are not talking. That's okay. You're going to talk here in just a moment. I promise you. Because here's the deal. I looked at Bible I go, and I said, man, praise him. Aren't they so good? He said, no, they're just anointed. He said they can do what they want to do because they're anointed. The anointing is the only thing that the Bible says that breaks the yoke. So when music fills the atmosphere, if you're sitting there going, I don't know, I don't like it, and all of a sudden, I like this. The anointing will go forward and it will break the yoke. So today, if you have your Bible, Psalms 35, if you're there, say amen. I'm so excited about this. In verse 27 and 28 is where I'm going to read, and I am reading now the New King James Version today because this brings us out better to me, all right? Verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad. Let's just do that right now. How about, let's just go ahead and shout and praise God for what God is doing now. Come on. Come on. Shout for the Lord. 
Make some noise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, even if you don't want to, do it. I'm telling you, you're missing your blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know how God did it, but he did it. I don't know how he paid the bill, but he paid the bill. I don't know why he saved me, but hey, he saved me anyhow. I don't know why he chose me to be at church today, but he did. See, you've got a lot to be thankful for. You've got so much to be thankful for. I like sermons like this because it makes me happy. It gives me joy. He says, let them shout for joy. Well, we, we go to a quiet, re reserved church. We don't make no noise. Let them shout for joy and be glad in it. That's what the Bible says, Blake. Well, I, I, I just don't like shouting. Shout for Lord, the Lord and make joy. Well, I don't know. Okay, sit there then. <laughs> I'm not. I can't. How many of y'all got the I can't help it? Praise God. I am so glad y'all are not religious. I am so thankful that we don't have to sit and have a business meeting on. Are they too loud? Are they, what's wrong with them? The lights are down. I'm so thankful. Praise God. I preach myself happy. I say it all the time. But that's, what, that's what David said. Nobody would listen to him. He went up by a little juniper tree, and he said, I'll preach this tree. I'll preach myself happy, preaching to a tree. I'm going to have a King David moment this morning. Yep. Hallelujah. He says, shout for joy and be glad. Watch that. Who favor my righteous cause. Listen to this. And let them say continually, continually, continually. It's going to get in your spirit today. I'm going to preach until it gets there. Let the Lord be magnified. Listen to this. Who has delight. Who has pleasure in the prosperity of the servant? If God said that about a servant, but in Galatians chapter 3, he says, you're no longer a servant, but now you are my child. You are my son. You are my daughter. If he said to tell the servant to give him praise, how much more God says, I, I, I rejoice, I delight, I have pleasure in my children, in their prosperity unto my servant. You went from a servant to a son. No longer am I a servant. I am a child of the righteous God. I'm, I'm good this morning because I'm no longer a servant. If God would do that for his servant, how much more will he do for his child? My God, I want y'all to get this so bad. Watch this. He has pleasure. He delights in the prosperity of his servant. Watch this. And my tongue. She'll speak of your righteousness and your praise all the day. Lord, get, it, get that in their spirit. The Bible says, let them shout and be glad. And I'm going to go ahead and make a proclamation this morning. Sadness and depression has no place in this service today. Sadness and depression has no place in this house today. You know why? Because God don't like it. God don't want his children to go around sad and gloomed and doomed and bitter and angry and upset. He said, I want you to be glad in the house. I want you to come with a shout in the house. I want you to bless his name in the house. So I just wonder who you're listening to today. Are you listening to the world and the devil? Or did you come to praise him today? That's a big question today. And this sermon was deep, burned deep in my heart this week. And I wrote this down because I, 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 I felt the Lord speak unto me. You tell the people, I delight in their prosperity. This, this is controversy. Because you people, they don't like prosperity. If you don't like prosperity, that means you support gloom and doom. That means you support being broke. How many of y'all like being broke? Can't pay your bills. Boy, ain't this a good business meeting? Nobody. How many of y'all like to have money at least go out and buy a Big Mac every once in a while? My God! Why in the world would you not believe in prosperity when God says, I delight, I have pleasure in my children having prosperity? It has been a lie in the churches for too long. It has been a lie too long. And I come today by the authority of God to break this lie up. Listen to this. <laughs> God delights in my prosperity. 
God delights in my prosperity. If you're taking notes, I want you to write that down. God delights in my prosperity. Now I want you to turn to your neighbor. This is when it gets real in this house. I want you to look at them and say, God wants me to prosper. Sarah, God wants you to prosper. Bobby, he wants you to prosper. He wants you to be in health. Such as your soul prospers, he wants you to be in health. First John. And the church has settled for mediocrity. The church has believed the lie of the devil. They think just because you're sick, you're supposed to remain sick. Oh, I'm going to die, but I ain't going to die sick. I'm going to die. Why do I got to have, why do I got to die sick? Boy, I got some people on the edge of already taking notes. I'm going to tell the preacher this, and I'm going to tell the preacher that. Keep your notes and read your Bible. Watch this. God said this, I delight in my children's prosperity. Psalms 35, verse 27 and 28. And I really believe that what God spoke into my heart, the reason why some of you are missing that point is because you're not fully persuaded. You're not fully sold out on that point. You still got unbelief in your mind. Faith is not the problem for the church. Unbelief is the issue of the church. We've got the faith to get saved Unbelief is your problem this morning. You don't believe what you're praying. You know when you become dangerous? When you start believing what you're praying. You'll become a dangerous Christian. Lord, bless me. Bless me indeed. Keep me from evil. Enlarge my territory. I don't know why. Unbelief. You're, 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 you're not stable. And the Bible says in James that that God will not, will not answer your prayers because you're double-minded. Hallelujah in this house this morning. That means if you're praying and you're wavering, you're unbelief, you've got instability in your life and you're not stable. You're like an ocean being tossed to and fro, back and forth. You've got unbelief in your life. God says, I want to answer your prayer, but you've got to believe what you're you got to believe what you're praying. Hallelujah. Watch this. I hear people say this all the time. They say, well, my great granny was poor. My granny was poor. My mom and daddy was poor. Break the curse. Break the curse. Listen to me. I'm preaching deep today. Break the curse. You don't have to remain like they were. Greater is he, hallelujah, that is in you than he is in the world. And you need to break The curse. Somebody say, break the curse. What's this say? I'm going to break the curse. I'm not going to be a drug addict like my kinfolk are. I don't have to go to jail and spend time in jail. I'm going to break the curse. Hallelujah. I don't know if y'all believe that or not. You've got the power of God in you to break the curse right now. Oh, hallelujah. Whoo, I feel the Holy Ghost. You've got to break the curse. Break the curse. I feel that. Break the curse. Break the curse. Break the curse. I'm going to break the curse. I'm a new man. I'm a new life. I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things are gone and new things have come. I'm breaking the curse. I don't have to commit adultery. I will not commit adultery. I'm going to stand on the principles of God. I am a man of God. I'm going to break the I don't know. Listen to me. Break the curse. I feel that in my bones burning right now. I feel this. Break the curse. Hallelujah, God, I praise you. I don't have to be a drunk. I don't have to be a dope dealer. I don't have to sell my body. I'm breaking the curse. I'm breaking the curse. God, I I can't even stop. I can't stop preaching that. I want to, but I really feel there's been a, a, a silent pause there. Well, that's the way my kinfolk are. I don't have no choice. The curse. 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we're going to break the curse now. Y'all got me this morning. I need you to support what God is saying. I delight. I have pleasure in my children's prosperity. You think God enjoys you not meeting your bills monthly? Do you think God really actually enjoys you living the way you're living? Do you really think God don't want you to make your bills? Do you really think that God just wants you to barely get by? Come on, church, preach to me this morning. And I know what some of y'all are thinking. Well, you tell the people over in Kenya, Africa, it's them to prosper. See, I know how religious people think. Because I used to be one. Let me tell you something really quick. I got a friend named Patrick Kiyu that is a missionary in Kenya, Africa. I'm telling you, he don't want to come back to the States. You know why? He says, man, y'all are missing it. He said, I see see limbs grow out on people's arms and their bodies. I know some of y'all are sitting there going, ah, but it did it did it. But it did it did it did it did it. I don't believe it. Well, stay like you are then. I'm trying to tell you today the reason why it's so tough to preach a sermon like this is because you've been lied to all your life. All your life. Well, that's just the way it is. It rains on the just and the unjust. You don't even know what that verse means. And you're sitting and quoting Bible and quoting Scripture. Do a Hebrew study on that. And you'll be shocked what that means. I guess another sermon. Y'all come back next Sunday. We may hit that. But here's the deal. I'm not abusing this prosperity deal. I'm not the type of guy that says you give $10 and they'll send you miracle water and you're going to all, all your sores and scars will be gone away. That's stupid. That's called stupidity. Don't waste your money. Get on your knees. You don't have to pay $10 when God said, I delight in prospering you. I want you to be healthy. Are y'all getting this word today? I hope y'all are. Because I'm going to pre- it's, it's good. This is just, this is just one, one of four. I want you to listen to this preacher this morning. God loves you. I'm going to say it again. God loves his children. God loves his people. God loves his church. And if anybody be for me, I want God on my side. That means when a weapon comes against me, if God be for me, nothing can touch me. Oh, it may try to come in. It can't touch this. Y'all know it's coming. Y'all just hang on. God delights. God delights. He has pleasure, Sheila, in blessing his people. God wants to bless his people. What if I told you the reason why he's not is because of you? It's because of you. I'm so tired of people blaming it on your granny and your papa. Generational curses. You can break the curse. You're doing what you want to do. You're acting the way you want to act. You're going where you want to go. You're talking the way you want to talk. You can break the curse right now in Jesus' name. All you got to do is stand up and say, God, I'm breaking the curse today. It's gone. It don't have no hold on me today. I'm blood-bought. I am a child of the living God. I am in here, and God is in me. And that's all it takes. I'm breaking the curse today. I'm going to show you all some unique scripture. I wrote this down. I'm going to give it to you like this, Jeremy. I wrote this down in my notes. I want all of you to own your home. I know it may sound silly to y'all. I even wrote this, Greg. I said, I want all of you to own the car you're driving. And don't have to quit, you had to quit making payments. Did you notice I say own? Own? Own it. You know what the Bible says? It's a crazy scripture, but it's just so good. The Bible says that, uh, that a child of God, my, my, it's going in and out, I hear it. That a child of God should be the lender and not the borrower. That means this. You know how the church was set up? This is going to blow y'all's mind. Church history, church class, one-on-one. The church was set up to bless people in need. That means if they had a need, they didn't have to go to the bank and borrow money. The church would take care of the need. Wait, now the government has taken over the church's responsibilities. And it has hindered the church what we do now. 
Now we got something called benevolence, but it wasn't called benevolence in the, in the New Testament day. It was called need. Not greed. Need. Dr. W.A. Criswell, I'll never forget this, at the Southern Baptist Convention in 2001, he said a, a, a man come to his office. He told his secretary, he said, I need to talk to Dr. Criswell. And uh, the woman said, have you got an appointment? Because this church had like 10,000 members. And um, he said, no, I don't have an appointment. He said, but I want Dr. Criswell to pray over me. He said, I've got cancer. So the, the secretary let the man go from the outer office into Dr. Criswell's office, the inner chambers of where the pastor was at. He got in there and he said these words, Dr. Criswell, he said, um, um, well, secretary first, Pace Matt said, I got a man coming back. I want you to pray for him. He's got cancer. When he got back there, Miss Dixie, you check this out. It's the Southern Baptist Convention, 2001. He said these words. He, he said, Dr. Criswell, I really don't have cancer. I want you to help me with my electric bill. <laughs> Dr. W.A. Criswell, man of God, full of the Holy Ghost, said these words. Now you've got cancer. <laughs> the man died three months later of cancer. What I'm trying to tell you today is this. God is no joke. We're not up here because we make a lot of money. We're not up here to put a performance on in a light show and to say one, two, three, and ABC and hope everything works out next week. I believe the word of God. I believe that it's sharper than a two-edged sword. If I didn't believe it, and if you don't believe it, you will go to hell. Can I get any plainer? But when God says, I delight in my children's prosperity, I think it's at least worth looking at. I think it's at least worth looking at. So I wrote this down. What is prosperity? You might, you might say, what is prosperity? Because you've got, you got to know what prosperity is. Because a lot of people watch it. Here's what the religious people do. You ready? Money, 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 money. No. That's not what God's talking about. That is not what God's talking about. And he said, Brian, where do you believe in prosperity? What's my other option? <laughs> What's my other option? Bankrupt? Being poor? Defeat? Let me, let me, I want you to write this down if you're taking note because this right here will help you when someone says, do you believe in prosperity? I know there has been pastors come on with a white suit on TV, and they sit there and they say things and they lie. I know people have abused the word prosperity, but they don't know what they're talking about. Here's what prosperity means. Y'all ready? It means to exceed, to excel. Now think about this. To exceed and to excel, now listen to this, have success, listen, and not be spiritually bankrupt. That's what prosperity means. Did I say anything about having $100 in your pocket? No, I didn't. But I did tell you this, to exceed, to excel, to have success in your life, and not to be spiritually bankrupt. Now, I want you to turn your Bibles, I'm almost done. Luke chapter 15. Y'all getting this word? I know it's more of a teaching, but it's okay. Y'all, We're going to teach a little bit and preach a little bit at the same time. Luke chapter 15. This is the story about the prodigal. I guarantee you after I read this word to you and I preach this what God has given me, I guarantee you never looked at it like this. Hey, watch this. These verses right here changed my life. A couple, two and a half years ago, we had to make a big decision on buying this land for $350,000 or $349,000. And I'm not going to lie. I, I was sweating a little bit. I, and I know you say, well, Brian, you're the, you're, the, you're the dreamer. Yeah, but dreamers sweat sometimes. In the back of my mind, here's what Satan was telling me. Now, y'all ready for some truth? Because I'm, I'm taking my heart and I am exposing it to you today. I'm sitting here going, what if people don't tithe? I was sitting there going, whoa, what if we start declining and people leave the church? I know y'all don't think like it. I'm going to share my heart anyway. And well, what if this happens and what if that happens and what if this don't happen and blah, blah, blah. I mean, my mind, I was basing everything upon a mentality. 
And what I really believe God just spoke into my heart is you've got to have a godly mentality to ever move a heavenly principle. That's good on earth. So good. You've got to have a godly mentality to ever move a godly principle here on earth. Because I am spirit and I have to relate to him in spirit. So I read this chapter, and I, I, listen to me, this, this has been going on for two and a half years. This verse got in my spirit, but I'm just now preaching it today. Isn't this crazy? So I was going back through my notes, and I wrote this down. Scared, scared, scared. Might as well put fear, fear, fear. And I want to show you something. This, this, these verses right here changed my life. Luke chapter 15, if you better say amen. Verse 17, I'm going to read just a little bit. But when... He came to himself. He came to his senses. I'm reading from the New King, New King James, okay? He said, how many, listen to this, of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to even spare? He said, my father has servants that are eating more than I am. My father has hired men making it better than I am. Watch this. And I'm perishing. With hunger, verse 18, I will arise, hallelujah, I will arise, I will get up, I will go forward, I will do what God tells me to do, amen, and I will go to my father, in this verse, this father represents father God, it's a, it's a typology that God the father is like this father here in the prodigal story, so you realize this is, I will go to my father, and I will say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven, and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired. Now, I told you a while ago, we ain't no what. I'm his. Let, let me show you a father's mentality. This is so good. I love, thank you, Jesus. God, thank you for giving me this word. And he arose and came to his father. When he, listen, when he was still a great way off. This is the first time in your Bible you ever see Jesus running. You'll, you'll never find in the Bible, no more, Shannon, that, that Jesus ran. This is the only time in your Bible you'll find, you'll see, where Jesus ran. I love what a beautiful picture of Jesus. When he saw him a great way off, his father saw him. He saw him. He had compassion. Number two, he had compassion. And ran. He ran. He ran. And he fell on his, and he's on his neck. And he what? That's, that's a father. That's God's mentality. It even gets deeper. Watch this. Verse 21. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against your sight, and I am no longer to be called your, your son. Notice he went son, servant, going back and forth. And some of you feel like a servant still, but you are a son. Hope you all are getting this word. Verse 22. But the father, but God. Look at this. Said to one of his servants, bring out a torn robe. Bring out a wrinkle robe. Bring out something. This father, who represents Daddy Jesus, he said, hey, you go get the best robe. The best robe. Best robe. Watch this. And put it on him. And bring, what else did it say? A ring on his hand. So God's all about the bling bling. He ain't about just the bling. He's about the bling bling. You say, Brian, that's something MC Hammer would do. Well, maybe he's right and maybe he knows more than we do. Watch this. And sandals on his feet. And I love verse 23. Y'all are there. Say amen. I'm almost done. I promise. And bring the skinny, thick, beat down, lame, one eye. 2.2 legs. He said, you bring me the best robe. You bring me the best jewelry. You put new shoes on my son's feet. And don't you go get a sick old cow. You bring him a fat calf. How many of y'all glad we serve a flame in yon God? We serve a God that wants the best for us. We serve a God who says, yeah, I want to give you more. Yeah, that's right. Some of you still don't believe that. I know you don't, and that's okay. I wish I had. I'm telling you. See, y'all thought he was doing calisthenics. 
praising the Lord. So here's what God wanted me to tell you guys. I'm done. The son was far off. The father ran and kissed him. Give me the best robe. Give me a sick cow. Fat. Fat. <laughs> fat. I ate a steak last night, but I'm that fat. Turn your, I, I told Dana I was going to do this. She said, don't do it. I have to. <laughs> Turn your neighbor and say, are you fat? <laughs> Travis like, no, but I guarantee Travis Gippen likes a fatty calf. I guarantee you. Amen. Check this out. And fat means faithful and true. Faithful and true. Fa See, y'all's minds are going, oh, my God, somebody just called our guest a fat person. <laughs> no, you didn't. You said, are you faithful and true? Are you fat? Are y'all fat? Oh, yeah, I'm fat. I'm fat on Jesus. I'm faithful and true to Jesus. Hallelujah. I like this kind of preaching. So here's what God said. Now, the other son, listen to this. I guarantee you I've never seen this. The other son got mad, got angry, got upset. And watch this. This is so, so good. Look at this. Verse 20, uh, 27. And, it, and he called one of his servants and asked, what are, these, what are these things meant? And he said to him, your brother, come home. And because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed a skinny cow. There's a reason why he said this. I, I, he said it and said it twice. And we just read over it and say, what? Well, a fat cow. No, there's more to it. But he was angry. Look. And would not go in. Therefore, his father came out. How many of you are glad that we serve a God when you don't want to do right? He's done right. He saved you. He blessed you. He comes out whether you want to go in or not. Man, I, woo, I preach it, preach it, preach it. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you and you and never trespassed against your commands at any time. I'm leave it to Beaver. I'm June Cleaver. And yet you never gave me a young goat. Now hold on. He didn't say nothing about a calf. He said, you've not even given me goat and the rest of the, you can read on down later on but here's what God wanted me to ask you today see the daddy God had a fatted calf mentality but his son had a skinny goat mentality the father God Jesus best robe fatted calf shoes on your feet bling bling on your finger Fat, fat it, God. I'm telling you, you got it. But the son had a skinny goat mentality. I just wonder today, how many of you today are sitting under my teaching after reading the Bible, explaining the Bible, you still have a skinny goat mentality? Let me tell you what a skinny goat mentality is. I like this. We're going to have a little fun. Well, praise the Lord, I'm barely getting by. Skinny goat. Well, God just don't want me to have much, skinny goat. Well, one day when I die, by and by, blessed be his name, I'll have my mansion, skinny goat. Skinny goat. And people get mad at my type of preaching because I believe in the prosperity of God. I believe that God wants me to be rich in his name. If you're born again and you're saved, you're rich. Hallelujah. Fatic calf mentality. Here's what fatic calf mentality says. Bring me the best. I, I'm not going to settle for a half-blessed life. I'm going forward. Hallelujah. I'm going to live while I'm living. Hallelujah. I've got a fatic calf mentality. I, watch this. I don't believe I'm a blessed man. I know I'm a blessed man. I don't believe that God halfway loves me. I know that God all the way loves me. 
I just don't believe I'm going to heaven. I know I'm going to heaven. I just don't believe that God wants a little bit for me. I know God wants a lot for me. See, watch this. It's a good word. It's a good word. You've got to quit believing sometime in your life and start knowing in your life. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. I know I'm saved. I know I'm born again. I know I'm rich man in Jesus Christ. I know I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. How many of you know that you know that you know that you know you don't believe no more? You know that you're going to heaven. That makes the difference. That makes all the difference in the world right there, guys. Some of you are sitting here right now under my teaching, knowing good and well how you're living. Knowing good and well if your heart were to stop right now, you don't know where you're going. Are y'all going to take that chance? Well, I, I know I could do better. Well, do it. I wrote this down. Praise the team, you guys. They're coming. Fatted calf mentality, skinny goat. Now, y'all got to write that answer down. I don't know if y'all are a goat or a calf. <laughs> I don't know how what you think, but I will tell you this. How you act is how you think. How you act in your life. Listen, you cannot come to church on a Sunday and put a good godly smile on your face and say, oh, blessed be the name, and go out and live like a skinny goat. You can't do it. See, I'm so crazy. I'm so crazy. Not really. I just believe Jesus. We're going to be out of debt this year. I'm so crazy. Watch this. We're going to be out of debt. I don't know. Here's the deal. Some of y'all got a check in your pocket, right? It. You say, oh, you, you've done it now. I, I don't like you now. Well, tithe. If everybody tithe, you wouldn't have to go into a building program. It'd be built. Oh, preach that, preach that. That's good. See, we want to be prosperous, but we don't even obey the small commands. That's a good one right there, too. We want us prospering, God. We want to be blessed. But we don't even follow the small laws. It's the small commands. If you're not faithful over the small things, God's not going to make you ruler over the large things. I wasn't ready for Elkhorn Baptist Church a long time ago. Sometimes I feel like, oh, God. But, man, I'm living a dream. I wrote this down. I want you all to think about this just for a moment. God, I love God. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, I am the seed of Abraham. Abraham and, help me out, Holy Ghost. Genesis chapter 13, verse 2. I think that's right. Somebody, somebody turn your Bible real quick. I want to make sure we're all in the same, because I know some people like, boy, I hope he's wrong. I'll show him he's wrong. He's got the wrong scripture. Holy Ghost, God don't lie. I believe it's Genesis chapter 13, verse 2. And if this is right, I give God praise, because I'm telling you, I'm not smart enough. What's verse 2 say, Travis? God, I praise you, and I stop right now. Thank you for this verse. Can I come on your Bible real quick? Genesis chapter 13, verse 2. Now remember, I am the seed of Abraham. That's what uh, Galatians chapter 3 tells you that. Abram had become very wealthy in livestock and silver and gold. Well, that's spiritual. Livestock? Are you serious, guys? Are, are you with that elementary? Well, that's a spiritual prosperity. No. It said he became wealthy with livestock, silver, and gold. That's good stuff. And here's what else I wrote. Now, y'all got to do your homework. I'm just planting a seed. You must go from a skinny goat mentality and start living a fatted calf mentality. Do you realize how big heaven is right now? Come on. He's my father who art in heaven. Blessed be the name. Heaven is 1,500 miles wide. 1,500 miles high. And 1,500 miles deep. Do you realize in heaven, I'm just saying, 
I'm just saying. Do you realize in heaven that the streets are gold? They are not pavement. It is not asphalt. It does not have to be paved once every three years. This is solid. Ah, solid gold. Do you realize that the gates in heaven have pearls all over them? Pearls. Do you realize in heaven there is a mansion? I did not say a shack. I did not say a barely get me by. I did not say I'm barely going to pay my electric bill. It's already bought because the S-O-N is hallelujah. I've got a mansion. Gary, you've got a mansion. Boy, we'll read John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. But boy, when you start preaching a prosperity message, that that's waiting for me. I've got streets of gold. I've seen pearls on the gates. And I love what the daddy said here in Luke 15. I'm done. He said these words. Son, verse 31, y'all got me? Aaron, if you can put this up, I want you to put it up there. Luke chapter 15, verse 31. I dedicate this verse over to you today. After his son complained, he said, Daddy, you never gave me a skinny goat. I love the father's response. And this is what I'm telling you today. He said to him, Son, you are always with me. And all... Listen to me, let's just get in your spirit. All, where's it at? It was there, put it back up there. Listen, I want y'all to read this. I, listen, I, you've got to get this in your spirit. And he said to him, son, daughter, <laughs> you are always with me. And all, that I have. I want y'all to look at this preacher this morning. All that Jesus has, I don't care what anybody ever tells you, is you. All that God has, it's yours. It's yours. Take it. It's yours. Take it. Everything God's got, it's yours. Everything God has. Think about this. Hold on, preacher. I don't believe it. Then you don't believe the Bible. You have not because you ask not, James 4, 3. Everything I have is yours, Paige. Do you really believe that? So my question is this. How many skinny goat Christians do we have? Man, I don't know about going into that stuff over there, skinny goat. Well, I, I just don't know about this. And I know God wants us to have all things but skinny goat. You say, Brian, that's me. No, that's a skinny goat. Skinny goat. God is waiting for some fatty calf Christian mentality. God is waiting. He said, it's yours. Well, if this gets in your spirit, y'all going to be dangerous. You're going to be dangerous because then you'll quit making excuses to live the way you're living. Fatic, calf, Christian. So I know this wasn't a hoorah, but here's what I do know. God gave me this word. How many skinny goat mentality people are out there? I told Dana coming back from Bowling Green last night. I said, Dana, I said, tomorrow... You're going to be married 18 years. And I said these words to her. Check this out. Praise God for that. I said, Dana, first of all, I want to say thank you. I did. I said, thank you. You're the only woman that would not divorce me 59,000 times. You're the only woman that can put up with me. I'm hard to live with sometimes. I know I am. Y'all are too. Quit looking at me all sacrilegious. And quit hitting your husband or your wife. Here's what I said. I cannot wait for the next 18. I cannot wait for the next 18. Because see, something happened to me. 
I just didn't eat filet mignon last night. I'm eating the fatted calf again today. And I made my mind up. Come hell or high waters, I'm in it to win it with Jesus Christ. No more skinny goat, fatted calf. No more skinny goat, fatted calf. I'm going to make it in the name of Jesus Christ. Save her soul. Say, we need to start praying now. Don't wait till she gets 12 or 13 when she starts acting like a little heathen, because she will. I know she's pretty right now, but they turn out, I mean, I'm not, you know what I'm saying, and Blake's over there, you know what I'm saying? And I did too. How many of y'all was a heathen before in your life? Y'all once was like this. What happened? I bind the old skinny goat mentality right now. And we release. The fatted calf mentality. We're living. We're going. We're growing. We're going to do something for God. Amen.